My first guest today came to fame through that wonderful hit television series, Hee Haw. But Lulu Roman's life was hardly ideal. Take a very special look at this, and then Lulu is going to be coming out. Lulu Roman, best known as a regular on the comedy music series Hee Haw, was born with a thyroid dysfunction in a home for unwed mothers and quickly placed in an orphanage. It was during that time in the orphanage she learned to use her sense of humor as a defense against the teasing of other children. While on Hee Haw, she became addicted to drugs, which caused her to be released from the show in 1971. Shortly thereafter, she discovered that she was pregnant with her first child. Lulu's search for happiness and acceptance, a search which nearly led to her personal destruction, led her instead to her Christian conversion. Positive changes eventually resulted in a full pardon from the governor of Texas, rejoining the cast of Hee Haw and induction into the Country Music Hall of Fame for her Southern Gospel albums. From her loneliness in an orphanage, her bout with addiction, and her new life as a Christian, Lulu has kept her sense of humor through it all. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome my very special guest, Lulu Roman. God so bless good to you. see you, Dr. Sorrell. Welcome it's to It's been Hell 20 Club. years. It's been a long it's time. It's been a long time. But yeah. you look ravishing. Thank you. Yes, you do. Please Thank be you. seated. <laughs> you know, I'm excited to have you here on the helpline. You come <clears throat> from fame, tremendous fame, but your life had incredible ups and downs and ins and outs and you were born in an unwed mother's home yes i was how did how did that happen well i'm not really sure okay <laughs> uh that's the story that i was was told um uh born in a little home in pallet point texas uh i think they said it was called hope cottage which is very ironic and, and from, from, from there, there, you went placed, in, into, placed an to an, into an orphanage. Yeah. Yeah. And then from an orphanage, how long did you stay in the orphanage? <clears throat> I was put in there when I was about three and a half years old, and I stayed there until I was 18. Wow. 14 and a half years. I spent my childhood there. And, and, and how did you come <clears throat> out of the orphanage? Were you angry? Adopt? I know, <laughs> angry. But what, were you adopted? No, they didn't adopt fat kids. Okay. See, I was Say the roly poly. They didn't adopt fat kids. <laughs> so uh, your your, your battle graduated. your battle with obesity started mm -hmm. at a very at early a very young age. age. I remember they would take us all at the beginning of every year before you started school. Everybody had to go have a physical checkup, you know. And all my little friends would say, "I weigh thirty eight pounds," or "I weigh forty two pounds." And I said, "I weigh sixty eight. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I didn't know back then that that was, you know, not what was supposed to be, shall we say, what society calls the perfect thing. How, how did you, Lulu, come from that type of a background <clears throat> into the fame of Hollywood mm -hmm. and Hee Haw? How, how did that transition take place? That Here you are, 18 years of age. Uh -huh. You're coming out of the orphanage, mm -hmm. and you stepped out into life. I did, and I went crazy. I did. I got involved in drugs at a very early age and uh, learned that I Before could... Before 18? Oh, I started doing drugs when I was in high school. They sent us out to public schools, and we learned how to do drugs when we were in school. We did. And so I spent about the next 10, 12 years of my life just wasting away on drugs because I was so angry. So <laughs> with that condition, you got <clears throat> into... The Hollywood scene? Well, I worked in the Dallas nightclubs when I was a kid. Okay. okay? <laughs> and I met a Singing? fellow. No. 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 Being funny. Being a comedian. Oh. 
And, and humor really yeah. helped your life it in, did. A, in it, a great even way. Even from a very early age, I learned right. that I could make them laugh with me instead of at me. I think God just gave me a quick wit, you know, to, as a, a protection around me, he did. And I met Buck Owens uh, working in, in the nightclubs down there, and we got to be good friends. And he used to say, you are one of the funniest people I've ever met. And one of these days, you're going to be a big star, and I'm going to have something to do with it. And I'd flick that cowboy hat, and I'd say, keep talking, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, God had a plan. And when they put the Hee Haw show together, they had a list. They were very smart of all the characters that they wanted, okay? They wanted one gorgeous blonde, one gorgeous brunette, a boy next door type, a girl next door type, a fat, dumb man, a fat, dumb woman. Buck said, I've got you, girl. She's in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> now, we in the height of your fame, having tremendous acceptance and accolades and all of the success that television and Hollywood could give a person, something happened to you. It did. It Tell did. us about it. Well, I came to a place that all the, the anger had consumed me to such a degree I had tried everything that the world had to offer. I was 26 years old. My life had taken me through men, money, sex, show business, everything. And everything that I touched fell to pieces. And I had gotten busted the second time for possession of drugs. Now, this was <clears throat> after you were on here, y'all. Uh -huh. yeah. And after you got, got fired. Well, not really. They didn't really fire <clears throat> me. They just kind of eased me out. Because, because of your... Because God had a plan, honey. <laughs> yeah, right. But because, <laughs> but because of, of your drugs, drug addiction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sponsors yeah, had so said that if you go to jail, this could be a real bad thing for our, for our show. And um, I, I had a little baby boy that was born addicted to drugs, and they told me he was going to die, and it's the first time I thought about that God they shoved down my throat in that orphan's home. And I always love to tell people that God has a great sense of humor because my first prayer did not consist of, Dear God, my first prayer consisted of, Yo, dude! <laughs> if you're real, I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> you got to be real careful how you talk now because he hears you. He does. And um, the next thing they knew, they went in and to check him out, and they couldn't find anything wrong with him. So prayer and it was absolutely works. written on the medical records, act of God. There was nothing else like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So you went back on Yeehaw mm -hmm. after all of that experience. Mm -hmm. But now you went back on Hee Haw. Let me tell you how that happened. Clean. I did. I walked in. I said, hello. And Marsha was there. And she said, can I help you? And I said, Marsha? She said, Lulu? I looked so different because the Lord had just changed my whole countenance. And so I ended up sitting in there talking to all these people who, most of them at that point were Jewish, okay? And they said, what are you doing? I said, well, I got saved and I gave my heart to Jesus and he delivered me from drugs. And now I sing. And they said, you do what? And I said, I sing, because they tried to get me to sing before it was so bad they never showed it. <laughs> and so I sat there and sang, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine in that office. And boy, uh, by the time we were finished, everybody was in tears. And they said, will you come back? And I said, I'll, I'll pray about it. If it's the Lord's will for my life, I'll come back. And I said, if I do, I'll come back on one condition. Is that, that is that you let me sing my gospel music. And they said, oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. So they called and said, well, yes, you can sing, but now... They're not real happy about you using that word Jesus. And I said, listen, I've got a truckload of songs that say Lord and Savior, honey. I can handle this. <laughs> Before it was over, they were bringing me songs oh, that had that Jesus wonderful. in the title. Yeah, so. And so full circle, you came back. Your acceptance was greater was it was, than yeah. ever before. I was so different. Everybody was like. <laughs> and then that, that problem uh, with obesity? Oh, yeah. So you dropped two dress sizes or three? Four. Almost five. Wow. Four <laughs> dress sizes. I lost 155 pounds. I remember. How much? Yes, 155 pounds. 155 pounds. Yeah. I tell you, this is such an exciting interview here together. Thank you. And we, I feel like I'm 30 years old and just starting all over again for we, the Lord, honey. We, we, we could go on and yes. on and on. And <laughs> Those of you that are watching on the helpline, I want you to listen very carefully. Lulu's story, her life, is a story of tremendous hope 
not only inspiration, but hope. She came here to tell you that what God did for her, he can do for you. Yes. And Lulu, yes. we're excited because I understand you're going to sing for us. I'm going to sing. All right. Let's give Lulu a great big hand. Tell her we love her. Thank her for being on the helpline as she comes to sing for us. Wonderful voice. 